despite being in a tracking mode, we're still seeing very dangerous speeds of this high-speed pursuit coming up on a major street. Man, I'm having a hard time keeping up with this guy. He's going so fast here. You can see the speedometer down there touching over 70 miles per hour. Oh, there he is. We're shooting from a distance again. New protocol here for safety reasons. We try to give LAPD their space when we get uh, in the Class Bravo area because of the restrictions from LAX. So as of right now, we're shooting from a distance here. If he comes a little closer to the 10, the Santa Monica Freeway, or a little uh, more towards East LA, we'll be able to get a closer shot here. Although, anybody else here yet? Not yet? Okay. You can see the shadow of the police helicopters. Uh, again, we're, uh, they're talking about sending a uh, LAPD. I'm listening to them. They're sending a unit to Washington and Hoover, or Washington and Main Street. Washington and Main Street is where we had one collision. So far as we've seen only one collision. Surprisingly, that is all we have seen considering how reckless and dangerous this person has been driving. Oh, man. We're getting closer to Alameda. That would be a good thing if he gets, uh, we can go down the Alameda corridor. Our pilot's doing a great job trying to maintain these shots here. Coming up on the main street, red light just ran that red light right there. We're moving a little bit in the south direction, so we're kind of uh, on the outskirts of the LAX airspace. We're kind of east of this vehicle, shooting in a westerly direction, trying to do, trying to do our best to uh, keep visual of this driver. You got eyes on them still, Aldo? I'm struggling to get this. I mean, we are going fast. I feel, I feel we're picking up speed here in the helicopter, and we're still trying to catch up. Coming up on a red light here. You can see him right over there. He may have made a turn. I think he may have made a turn here, Aldo. Hold on. There he is. I think he's coming towards us, Aldo. Slow me down here. I got to double check so I don't lose it. Oh, that's him. Are you with me? Okay, copy that. Uh, he's coming towards us now. I just want to make sure you know. I know you were talking to Tower. Uh, yeah, guys, so here we go. Uh, vehicle's coming towards us. He's traveling in eastbound direction. This is Gage Avenue. And, 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 and look at this. I mean, this is a tracking mode. Uh, they do a tracking mode so the, ve so the vehicle won't drive so recklessly. Unfor oh, dead end street. Dead end street here. Thought I saw dead end street. Yeah, dead end street. So... Probably it's going to end, which is a good thing. Let the driver get out of the vehicle and run, because uh, that way people won't be in danger. Well, now we're going to back up, and looks like we may have hit that car. Coming off of a dead-end street, this is East 64th, East 64th. Unfortunately, he decided to stay in the vehicle. Now we're turning southbound here. I'm shooting 12 o'clock. Do we have company yet? I mean, look at the bumper. The bumper is dragged off. That was a result from an accident there. Uh, the first collision that we saw was over on Washington and Main Street, where that vehicle collided in uh, with another car as the driver blazed through an intersection on a wall on on the on the s sidewalk, going northbound now. Whew. We're in a residential area, so we're seeing some dangerous speeds. Running red lights there, as you can see. He's on uh, uh, traveling westbound now. So he's traveling westbound back. Uh, uh, now he's turning northbound. So that's uh, uh, on Compton Avenue. Looks like he's just kind of zigzagging in this area.
He's on 70th Street. He's on eastbound 70th Street. So he is east of the 110 Harbor Freeway, traveling in a westerly direction. Looks like he's making a southbound turn now on Hooper. It might be Hooper Street, so he's going southbound on Hooper here. Starting to pick up some speeds on these major streets. Oh, although he's uh, going southbound now. The driver had a couple of opportunities to exit the vehicle, even drove down a dead end street and backed it up, hit a parked vehicle and continued uh, rather than, oh my goodness, that is just like so close. I mean, he's just blazing through these lights without any regards, I mean, uh, to for the drivers. You're watching this as I am and it is uh, a very tense pursuit as this driver is driving so recklessly, not even have any regards to anybody else on the street. He's still way out there. Okay, so it's it's getting a little challenging following this car. Again, New Shopper for Alpha, we're covering this pursuit where we're showing it from a distance here. As long as he is in the Class Bravo airspace, which is the LAX airspace, there's a lot of restrictions. And so really, we stay clear of the LAPD helicopters. We need to give them their space, and that's why we're kind of showing a distance shot. I think I actually finally uh, may have just lost the vehicle here. We'll find it for you here shortly. Oh, there he goes. You can just see little bits, little bits. There it is. There it is. So he's traveling southbound right now, and we're f and we're southbound on Alameda. We're southbound on Alameda. We're paralleling this. I'm shooting to the west. Uh, he's heading into the Compton area. Oh, there he is. So that's kind of a general area we're going towards, towards the 105 freeway. You can see it's just getting a little more tricky shooting this from a distance here. Still got eyes on him. Okay, vehicle's now making a westbound turn. Yeah, we're, we're not gonna see him much longer. Uh, he is now. He just made a uh, eastbound turn, Aldo. So he's on 108th Street. So we must be just a little north of the 105. Uh, 115th Street is by the 105. So this building's in my way, so I got to find out. Hold on. I'll look for him. Uh, I'm going to lose him. I, I, that building. I don't know which way he's going. Is that him? Nope. Okay, I don't, to the left? Okay, yeah, no problem. Yeah, we're just so far away, it's really hard. I have to look for the LAPD airships. Okay, Aldo, I lost him. Hey, Aldo, are you with me? Hey, let me find out, we'll see where the LAPD airships are. Are they still over him? Okay, 12 o'clock. Uh, get him on my, help, guide me in, and then, uh, Whereabouts is he? Okay, guys, we're gonna re uh, reorient ourselves here. We're by the uh, 105 freeway. We're just gonna try to find where he is. Hey, Aldo, can you be my eyes or put it on my side so I can find him? Hey, Aldo, you copy me? He's coming towards us? Okay, whereabouts, please. That's going to help me. Whereabouts? Okay, so where am I, sh where, where am I going to shoot? I'm shooting 12 o'clock. Let me, let me get my, I'm shooting uh, 12 o'clock. Where am I going to find him, please? He 
Is he on a major street, a small street? Okay, there's the uh, there's the PD ship. Uh, oh. Do you have eyes on him, Aldo? Because okay, all right. So w the way we're finding the way we're going to try to find this is I'm looking at the LAPD helicopter above. I think he may be on the freeway here. Okay, Aldo, um, it's on your side, so I I can't see anything. You're gonna have to lead me through it. All right. Hey, Aldo. Hold on. Aldo, can you, uh, can you put it on my side? Maybe I can see where the LAPD airship is. Okay. Talk to me, Aldo. Are you? Do you see it? Oh, that's fine. Talk to me. So, okay, over here someplace. Okay, I see him. Okay, so a pilot's taking us to it. So we're kind of west of the location. A little bit of a challenge here. Bear with us. There's the LAPD helicopter. We don't have any units following. It'll kind of be easy. Just look for a BMW traveling really fast. He's going. I'm looking outside the wind, uh, helicopter right now. Okay, Aldo, let's go to the procession. Let's cancel this and go to the procession, please. Okay, so we'll go to the accident. I got eyes on him now, though. Well, there he is. At least I found him, but we're headed to another story right now. But uh, there's the vehicle. We're going to leave him on Cedar Avenue. Cedar Avenue in the Linwood area. Okay, we're done with that one. Tell me when you can talk, Aldo. Break, Carolyn, if you hear me, we're breaking off. Uh-huh, my pleasure. Booth, I've been given instructions to go to the procession. Aldo, do you hear me? Okay, so here are the instructions. The procession left about five minutes ago, so let's start going on the freeway. Let's go south 710, perhaps, unless if you've heard of where it is. Okay, well, let's look on the 710. If we don't see anything, let's make our way to the intersection. I don't see anything here. So let's go direct to the scene, and I'll look on the freeway. You got eyes on it? Oh, okay, sounds good. Rosa, you gotta, okay, um, okay, we're gonna leave the procession. We're just coming up on the procession. We're gonna try to find where the pursuit is. I don't know where it is right now. Although they want us to go back to the pursuit now. Yeah. I. We're just gotta find the, uh, the airship. I've got the LAPD airship just north of the 105, west of uh, Alameda. Aldo, are you on with me? Okay, good. Okay, good, good. All 
Now this one's hard to find. I don't even know who's on it. I'm not hearing anybody tracking it anymore. Yeah, we're doing our best, Rosa. We're almost there. We're almost there. Thank you for the update. That's Alameda there. I just got to find a BMW driving really fast and recklessly. Let me know if you got eyes on. There's the LAPD ship. I see him over here. He's probably going eastbound right now. You, you got him? I'm still looking. He's coming up on a major street here, maybe? Blue building? Is that blue building? Uh, north or south of that blue building? Okay, am I going to see him coming on this right here? Oh, there, wait, is that him? Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, good deal. All right, I got to, I got to put in my double zoom again. All right, good deal. You got eyes, you're good. Thank you. All right, well, New Shopper for Alpha, we're back on to this pursuit here. This is, uh, now in the Linwood area. You can see, uh, uh, we're coming at Southgate, actually, coming into the Southgate area. Uh, we've re-engaged into this pursuit, LAPD in a tracking mode. We do know there's one person in this vehicle. It's an alleged stolen vehicle, a BMW. That damage, you see, is done from a uh, previous accident uh, not too long into this pursuit. That happened near downtown Los Angeles, near Washington and Main Street. We have seen many, many close calls here. I got you now, Carolyn. We are we, we are following this pursuit right now. This pursuit originated out of the LAPD. We believe it was the uh, Wilshire Division. We heard chatter about a possible stolen vehicle, um, and when uh, they pulled up behind this vehicle and attempted to make a traffic stop, the pursuit began. It was so dangerous, they actually straight went into a tracking mode. Despite that, Carolyn, despite a tracking mode, uh, this vehicle was still traveling recklessly through the streets of Los Angeles near USC. For a time, it got onto the 110, the Harbor Freeway. We did see an accident near the intersection of Washington and Main Street. That's why you see that damage to the rear the vehicle. Dangerous speeds. We've seen pedestrians literally, literally running for their lives as this vehicle was blazing through a red light and went right through the crosswalk as the pedestrians were trying to cross safely. So right now, we're following this pursuit. We're on Tweedy Avenue. I believe we're in the Southgate area. We're just west of the 710 freeway and just north of the 105. Carolyn, I cannot tell you how many close calls I have seen. This is one of these very tense pursuits. This is real. We're watching this live as it is happening. There have been so many close calls. Somebody can get killed if this driver does not pull over anytime soon. Now, we did see this driver on one occasion pull over, and he got out of the vehicle Oh, right there, wrong side of the road. But as he noticed that the LAPD helicopter was still above, he got back into the vehicle and continued driving recklessly. And then another time, he traveled on a dead-end street, turned around, hit a parked car, and continued these reckless speeds, despite LAPD telling units, pull back, do not engage this vehicle. Look at the speeds right now. We're still seeing about 68 miles per hour coming on the wrong side of the road right now as we come up on a red light. Yeah, and what happens right here, Carolyn, is because there's, no, because there's no law enforcement officers, these people think it's just some reckless driver, which he is, but they don't realize that the LAPD helicopter is following this vehicle, and this is uh, a pursuit that, uh, of an alleged stolen car. How long will they engage in this? Well, you know, they're following him from the helicopter, so they're not really trying to uh, engage this driver. They're trying to de-escalate the situation and slow him down. Unfortunately, uh, the driver has a mind of his own and look at that we're starting to pick up some speeds that's the 710 freeway you just see we're going eastbound about 50 or actually now 60 miles per hour very dangerous following this pursuit here
That's right, and you can't get a unit right behind this vehicle because once you do, Carolyn, if this vehicle is already traveling at 65 miles per hour along Imperial Highway with uh, so recklessly, without any concern about any other drivers, look at him slamming on his brakes right there, just coming up behind the rear of that red vehicle. Uh, you know, you can only imagine what that will do. That'll escalate the situation. Law enforcement always always says public safety is number one. It's not worth it to chase a, a stolen vehicle right now. Uh, you know, it's it's they don't want to escalate the situation, uh, so that's why they've uh, disengaged the pursuit. But unfortunately, this driver still has a mind of its own and driving com completely recklessly and carelessly through the streets here of South LA. Yeah, and you know, the driver just ran another red light. That's just becoming the norm right now. We're coming into the Downey Norwalk area. We're traveling in a south direction toward the 105 freeway. And uh, you can see as he is uh, coming up on these intersections, sometimes we get a glimpse. Fortunately, uh, that's a green light there. But uh, many times just going just as fast through a red light without even slowing down. And really, you're taking a little bit of luck out of the pots each time because uh, something is going to happen. You continue driving like this, your luck is going to run out. He's getting on the freeway, Aldo. Yeah. Yeah, he's getting on the 105 Century Freeway. Our pilot, Aldo Bentevenia, doing a great job. This is one of these challenging pursuits. Earlier, Carolyn, we were following this pursuit, but because it was in the LAX area, we had to keep our distance there. It's a new policy. We try to give those helicopters the distance that they need where we're in such a compressed airspace. Right now, we're out of the LAX airspace. We're uh, coming up on, uh, well, it looked like it was one of those long on-ramps. Uh, that is uh, Paramount Boulevard as he's coming up on. So he still may be trying to get on to the freeway. Uh, let's see. I think this may be an on-ramp right here. So if that is the case, um, he, although shaking his head, yes, looks like he is getting on the freeway. That means uh, CHP may take over, but then again, does CHP want to engage in such a dangerous, reckless pursuit? 97 miles per hour, Carolyn, and we're just getting on. We're just getting on the freeway. So with wide open spaces up ahead, I am confident that we're going to see speeds well in excess of 110 miles per hour. Yeah, they could, but the problem is it's happening so fast and unpredictable where this driver is going to go. Unfortunately, this driver has already demonstrated he doesn't care about anybody else on the road. He wants to get away from law enforcement officers. He had ample opportunity. A couple of times he could have just gotten out of the vehicle and walked away and tried to hide. Unfortunately, uh, he stuck with the vehicle, and look at that, 110 miles per hour, 111, 116 we are doing our best trying to catch up to him. We've got our, we're giving her all she's got, Scotty, right now, but the helicopter's still having a hard time catching up to this driver as we're almost hitting 115 miles per hour. East on the 105, Carolyn, he's coming up on the 605. It means he's gonna either have to go north or southbound and slow down. I tell you, it is a well-made BMW, Carolyn. That was one thing that I noticed, that this vehicle keeps taking a licking, and it keeps ticking right now. It has been in a couple of accidents. You can see the, the uh, bumper is dragging behind, and the car is still traveling as if nothing is going on with it. We're coming up on an interchange right here. So it looks like he may be committed to the southbound lanes of the 605 freeway, using the right shoulder, a very dangerous maneuver. That is a right shoulder for emergency vehicles, as well as maybe vehicles that are broken down they move over to the right shoulder and that can come up on you really quick so that just makes this pursuit a little even more dangerous as we are committing to the south 605 looks like it may actually be exiting here we'll let you know here just one second Right, and you know, again, drivers are not aware that this vehicle is an alleged stolen vehicle in a pursuit. 
all they see is the driver driving really recklessly uh, coming up on them. And so, uh, you know, it, it also, as we saw with the pursuit the other day, a little bit of road rage where uh, somebody could get upset and start following and then becoming a distraction. Making a westbound turn right now on Rosecrans. So we're just right off the 605 freeway traveling westbound on Rosecrans. And despite being on surface streets, look at your speedometer there in the lower left corner, 74 miles per hour. Yeah, a tracking mode. And the reason, Carolyn, they do a tracking mode is because they want the driver to slow down. They don't want the driver to engage in any dangerous, reckless speeds or driving of this nature. And that hasn't worked. So you ask, well, why not just re-engage in the pursuit? Well, if he is driving this recklessly, 70 miles per hour on Woodruff, going northbound on Woodruff, if you get units right behind this vehicle, it's only going to escalate the situation. You know, it's a ticking time bomb. We keep going through red lights at reckless speeds. It's only a matter of time before something happens. We did see one accident right there, ran a red light. Fortunately, he slowed down a little, but he did already get in one collision that we saw. That was near downtown Los Angeles on Washington and Main Street. That's why you have the damage to the rear of that bumper. Uh, that's what created that damage there was a minor accident, fortunately, we're not hearing about injuries to the other driver, but it's only a matter of time. If this guy does not slow down and this pursuit does not come to an end, we could see a major accident with these speeds. Go ahead, eastbound. Yeah, that's what we heard. I was hearing some chatter was the LAPD Olympic frequency about some stolen vehicle. I was just kind of hearing chatter here and there. And then all of a sudden we heard about the pursuit. LAPD helicopter picked it up near the USC area. That's about where we picked it up, near the USC area. And we were just witnessing moments after moments running through red lights at a high rate of speed. One time we saw pedestrians literally having to run out of the vehicle's way. That big rig just making that... Uh, uh, southbound turn that was another red light that this uh, driver just blazed right through so unfortunately he is headed back toward the 605 there's the 605 freeway we'll see if he gets on uh, but unfortunately this driver is not slowing down and you can see as he's coming up on a red light we'll see what he decides to do here thank you Yeah, yeah, that's what my pilot was just telling me about. Uh, let's see, I, we can't see him. Uh, I'm trying to find him here. He went uh, under the overcross. I think he may have turned southbound if this unit's going southbound here. Uh, unfortunately, if that is him, let's see. There he is. Just look for the BMW with the rear bumper. So, Carolyn, I think this unit may be uh, coming up on him, not realizing uh, that was a sheriff's vehicle. Um, Although you can tell me if you see him, I don't know if that uh, uh, sheriff's deputy vehicle is going to be pursuing this vehicle. Uh, but right now, we're back on the 605 freeway northbound. If anything, it's a sigh of relief. I know we're seeing fast speeds, but we'd rather see these kind of reckless speeds, 115 miles per hour. We'd rather see it on the freeway than on surface streets. And believe me, we saw this guy driving about 80 miles per hour on surface streets in Los Angeles. Yeah, I'm just looking out briefly. I'm afraid to look away from my monitor, and I'll lose this guy because he's going so darn fast. But, Carolyn, right now, northbound traffic, really not too bad if the driver commits to the 605 freeway northbound. Uh, so far, we're seeing pretty decent, wide-open spaces on the freeway that invites fast speeds and reckless driving. But as long as we stay on the freeway, we have a little more of controllability as far as the uh, excessive speeds, seeing it being a little safer on the freeway. Look at that. That's the right 
right shoulder. That's not a lane, that's the right shoulder. And again, there's times, how many times have we been in a problem, we pull over to the right shoulder, all of a sudden you got this guy coming up really fast and that's how accidents happen. We've seen it before on pursuits, a vehicle maybe over to the right shoulder uh, with a mechanical issue and then a car plows right into it. So that's a very dangerous maneuver as we're continuing on the northbound 605 or just crossing over the five freeway. Look at those speeds, Carolyn. I mean, unbelievable at times hitting 115 miles per hour. This is a white BMW, an alleged stolen car. This is out of the LAPD, we believe the Olympic Division, where this pursuit is now continuing into the Downey area. You know, I only saw the driver exited the vehicle. It was a male. I mean, look at that, 120 miles per hour at times here. Uh, I saw the driver get out. I didn't see anybody else get out of the vehicle. Uh, that was ample opportunity if somebody else was in the car. A again, there's just a lot of questions right now. I mean, uh, this vehicle is an alleged stolen. Was it uh, questions we want to know? Was it taken in the commission of a crime? Or was it just an opportunity where this person saw a vehicle and took it? Uh, does he or uh, know the uh, owner of the vehicle. These are all questions uh, uh, the uh, CHP now probably and law enforcement are trying to answer. But as we continue north on the 605, we're coming into the Whittier area. You see how he's using that real narrow shoulder. Pilot's telling me there's traffic slamming on his brakes right over there. So, uh, you know, it's it's pretty dangerous. I'm hearing CHP right now. I think CHP is going to try to engage in this driver. They're going to try to set up units. But uh, you can see the vehicle traveling at a high rate of speed on the right shoulder through the Whittier area. My pilot's telling me we do have traffic up ahead. Yeah, and that's what makes it so dangerous. When we start seeing a lot of traffic, it escalates the intensity of the driver and this starts getting anxiety and starts driving recklessly and we start seeing more dangerous maneuvers. Again, that is why they put it in a tracking mode. They don't want the driver to do this. Unfortunately, this is what we're seeing in a tracking mode, driving recklessly on the shoulder on the northbound 605 freeway. A uh, lot of close calls here, Carolyn. Uh, again, it's just a matter of time. You you mix the equation with the reckless driver and these dangerous speeds, we are going to see an accident. It's just a matter of time, and we just hope this driver pulls over before something like that happens. Yeah, that's all we know, and that's the dangerous part, Michael, for law enforcement officers, is they may not have any more information as to the identity of the driver. We always talk about dispatchers. They are most likely trying to find out who owns this vehicle, maybe contacting that dri the owner of the vehicle to see whether or not they know if who the person who took their car, or was it just an opportunity and they saw this vehicle and took this vehicle. So they want to get the identity of the driver. We're trying to find that out right now. They're coordinating with other law enforcement agencies. Uh, looks like he's just passing over uh, the 605 freeway. Right now we are on, I believe it's Whittier Boulevard. So most likely law enforcement officers in the city of Whittier are aware that this pursuit is coming into their jurisdiction. LAPD helicopters still above. Will they engage in it? Highly probability not because how dangerous it is, but they will be there to, uh, to render any assistance if needed when this driver pulls over.
No, and that's what's making it so difficult and dangerous. There's no way an officer can throw a spike strip out to try to slow dead-end street. Pilot's telling me a dead-end street. We saw this before. He hit a dead-end street, and he turned around. Just get out, buddy. I mean, we want to see this guy get out of the vehicle because it's not worth it. But if he's going to try to re-engage, look at him spinning those tires, obviously trying to uh, get out in a, in a timely manner here. Um, I don't know if this is still a dead end up here. Maybe he found a way out. Looks like he did. But that would be the second time he went into that T intersection there. Uh, he kind of, pilot's telling me now, dead end street again. This will be the third time. So third time's the charm. Hopefully he just pulls over and runs, uh, and at least that'll alleviate any possibility of us seeing a very bad accident. That is true, and Michael, the fact that he keeps running into dead end streets also is an indication this driver does not know where he is. He's just going and, and, and he's running on adrenaline. Let's be real, that's what this is all about. He's running on adrenaline, uh, recklessly driving along surface streets here in the city of Whittier right now, uh, Tobias Avenue, just crossing over that stop sign, not, not slowing down. This is a residential area. We have families here. We have kids out playing right now. Uh, 50 miles per hour as we come up on this major street here. I think we're back to Whittier Boulevard. So again, we are in the Whittier area. Still haven't seen any law enforcement officers directly behind this vehicle, but we can tell you uh, LAPD helicopters still flying above and following this very dangerous reckless pursuit. Yeah, just one person there, and that would probably support what we saw earlier, the fact that the driver did get out a couple of times, pulling into a driveway of a building here. So hopefully uh, we may decide to exit the vehicle, uh, going through a shopping mall here. Let's see what this driver does here. It's right off of Passions Boulevard in Whittier. Yeah, and it looks... And yeah, that's a good observation, Caroline. Here we go, pulling into a parking spot. He's probably gonna, uh, in the big five parking lot. You know, it's, it, it's, it's like he keeps doing this, but then decides not to, and just goes over the, uh, the grass there without, uh, and pulls right out in front. And again, that driver there, these drivers don't realize this uh, vehicle is wanted for a high speed, you know, for an alleged stolen vehicle, but engaged in a high speed pursuit, they just may think this is a reckless driver, which he is, there is no doubt about it, but uh, the, it escalates the situation now, this person is wanted by law enforcement, so he is gonna do whatever it takes to get away from law enforcement, and despite law enforcement not being behind him, look, we don't see any units here, there's really no reason, all you see is the shadow, look at the shadow, in fact, there's a unit right over there, that may have been a Whittier or a CHP unit, but they're not engaging. They may have instructions from their watch commander. If this comes into our jurisdiction, do not engage. It is just way too darn dangerous. No, and the, the tracking really hasn't been working throughout this entire pursuit. The vehicle was still blazing through red lights, traveling on the wrong side of the road. We are eastbound Whittier Boulevard uh, in the city of Whittier. We haven't seen any Whittier PD units, but it's just a matter of time. Like I said, you're taking a bit of luck out of the pot each time we blaze through one of those intersections, running those red lights there. It's just a matter of time. Something's going to happen right there, right there. Oh, my goodness. That another close call right there take a little more luck out of that pot unfortunately somebody is going to get hurt if this thing does not come to a conclusion soon
You know, I think Carolyn may have uh, spotted this. He may be actually trying to find an underground parking lot. He knows that he's being followed by the LAPD helicopter. Go ahead and talk to me, Aldo. My pilot is uh, uh, bringing some information to me here. He's coming back onto surface streets. But, you know, they try to find an area where they can hide from the police helicopter. If I can't see him, if we can't see him, well, the LAPD helicopter or the law enforcement helicopter, they can't see him as well. And that's what the drivers try to do. Sometimes they'll either drive into downtown Los Angeles where all the high-rise buildings are or in certain areas where they can hide from uh, the police helicopters. And we all have seen that one too many times they'll pull into an underground parking structure or just a regular parking structure and be able to exit the vehicle without us seeing them. That was another close call. We are back on Hadley Road, uh, Hadley Streets here. We're still in the city of Whittier, and uh, we're making our way, I believe, northbound, headed towards uh, the Whittier Estates area. Turning right now. We're good on fuel right now, guys. I'm hot. You're good, Aldo. I'm shooting 2 o'clock, 2 o'clock, going eastbound. 2 o'clock going eastbound. You got him? Okay, thank you. Right there, there's a cop, there's a cop right there. Well, you know what? Let's see what happens. There's a law enforcement officer right over there doing a traffic stop. He sees this going on, that's Whittier PD. Uh, the vehicle took off. Uh, I don't know if the officer's going to engage. My pilot tells me we're in downtown Whittier. We're by Whittier College. So that's the approximate area where we are. He's traveling northbound on Washington Avenue. Uh, I'd be very curious to see if Whittier PD engages, but uh, vehicle just ran another red light. So we're going back towards, I believe, Whittier Boulevard, traveling in a northbound direction. And we can still see this vehicle recklessly driving through intersections. And really, Carolyn almost looked like, as he made that right turn, almost hit the driver's side door of that Whittier police unit. Okay. Okay, thank you. Right there by the trees, Aldo. Yeah, he's taking off. He found a, he found an area. Uh, he's running. Um, look at that. Uh, Whittier PD right over there. My pilot was telling me that they uh, are engaging. Uh, we're just going to follow the police unit. Hopefully, he'll take us to where the uh, driver is running. Uh, wow, uh, this guy is probably running pretty fast. Um, Officers, here he is. Where, there he is. We got eyes on this guy. He's on, running southbound on the sidewalk. We'll just get the helicopter around here uh, in a second. But you'll see him right there. And you see, it's difficult for us. We can't see him. Well, neither can the police helicopter. And maybe that's why he chose, of all streets, this street here with trees aligned. But he's not going to get away too far. I see officers in foot pursuits. There's officers in foot pursuit right there. Uh, looks like he's on this uh, street over here. So, well, the suspect's in custody. I'm hearing, uh, I believe they just took him into custody here. Uh, just give us a second here to turn around. But uh, there he is. He's on the ground. He's proned out. Uh, wow. You know what? I mean, Michael, Carolyn, we have covered many pursuits, uh, but this was a very tense one. And fortunately, we're not hearing about any injuries, what could have been, but this came to an end here in the city of Whittier, right off of Greenleaf Avenue, where Whittier police officers and LA County sheriffs are taking this individual into custody.
I got him now. You're good. Thank you. No. I'm back with you guys, sorry. I'm back with you guys. Yeah, the speeds is what made it very difficult. And you can, uh, you know, I don't know if it's just coincidence, but the exact place where the uh, driver uh, abandoned the vehicle, uh, there's a lot of trees in this area. It was challenging for us. I think it was right over here. So here's the car. Uh, this is where the car is. Maybe it's not by coincidence because we had a challenge of seeing the vehicle. That's the stolen white BMW. Officers from the Whittier PD are assessing it, but that's where he abandoned the vehicle, ran uh, westbound on Bailey Street and then southbound on Greenleaf and was taken into custody, not only by LA County Sheriff's, but also by Whittier PD. So joint agency working together to get the suspect into custody. And fortunately, this pursuit finally came to an end. Carolyn, Michael, it was a very dangerous one one's fingers were crossed and fortunately nobody was seriously injured or killed as a result of this reckless behavior. Yeah, yeah, the guy had confidence, you know, despite going into dead end streets, not knowing where he was, he still re-engaged. Uh, one time he did get out of the vehicle, but then opted to get right back in and continue driving recklessly in such a manner that we've saw so many close accidents. Our hearts were pounding many times as he just blazed through some intersections. And again, there was that one precise moment when pedestrians literally had to run out of the way of this vehicle as he ran a red light and narrowly missed a couple of pedestrians. Dude, that was crazy, Aldo. Okay, thank you guys. Okay, let me see what they want us to do. Driver, uh, you know what? I don't know if we can. I don't think there's going to be license plates there. Oh, the bumper came off? Okay. Okay. All right, let me see what they want here. Stand by. Okay, guys, what do you say we head back to the procession? You want us to go back to the procession now? I think we'll, we'll just follow. Let's go back to the procession. We'll just follow seven. Maybe they'll lead us to it. Good job, Ola. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for letting me know. You're kind of throwing stuff out that helps, like locations and stuff. I think fastest he went was 120. Yes, I know. 
I could feel your pain. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm just going for the ride. They gave you kudos too. You did a great job on that. Hold on, Tim. You got you got you got to speak up. Here, somebody's calling me on the 450. Uh, you got to speak up. Say again, please. Oh, okay, okay. I don't know why you're not coming in loud. Hey guys, uh, Tim, I should have probably let you guys know, we're down with the pursuit. They're sending us over to Boyle Heights. Uh, we're trying to get to the coroner's office. So, uh, is uh, Wilson still work for you? We're back arrow 177. Good deal. All right. Thank you. What? 710 of Florence? Okay. I don't even know where we are. I, I don't even, I can't even look up. I'm so disoriented on that pursuit. Well, that was our first pursuit actually going into the Bravo area. It wasn't too bad. Ask if you copy. It might be near the 710 floor, and I think the pilot is hearing some chit chat. So we're going to try to find it. If not, we're just going to go up to uh, the coroner's office. But I might see it. I think I see it. I think I might see it. Although this is a break in traffic. No problem. I'm um, looking here. Oh, what's going on at 710? Uh, all lanes are blocked. Is that it, Aldo? Down there? Yeah, there it is. Yeah, look at that. That's it. Good call. There's a huge procession. Okay, we found it. It is a rather large procession here, so we're picking it up over in the Southgate area on the 710 freeway, 710. Okay, I'll go. I'm gonna put in my double zoom here. Drivers on the other side, even uh, paying respect. Let me give them a real perspective first here before you turn of just how long this procession is.
Copy that, Rosa. I'm going to get this fire truck here on the overcross. This guy's right here. Let me just grab this shot here if you can. Once the once the once the uh, the procession approaches, I'm going to pull out. I just want to get them saluting. Okay, thank you. Trying to 